your class. This is uh, Professor Nick Sinski at UNC Charlotte. And uh, this is a remedial uh, tutorial for Illustrator. Uh, we use Illustrator a lot um, in the School of Architecture. And um, this is just kind of a quick tutorial to get you up to speed uh, to some of the various tools that we use in um, Adobe Illustrator. So when you first launch the program, this is the PC version. It's very similar to the Macintosh version. Um, but the keys will be different, and some of the layout options will be different, but the, the, the concepts are the same. Um, when you first load the program, uh, you'll want to start, uh, and you'll want to start making like an artboard, and that's the space that you're going to be working in. That's what they call that in Adobe Illustrator. So you go to File, New, and then you can um, basically like do, do your settings for your document. Um, we typically give you a layout for an assignment, so you, you, you would go into units, change this to uh, inches, and then begin by setting up your layout. In this case, let's say I do a 36 by 24 inch. So a, a layout that's wide and uh, that's wider than it is tall. Okay, you can set up this to do anything. There's also set, there's preset profiles, um, preset sizes, like that kind of thing. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just do 36 by 24 inch board. So you, your, your board comes up and um, some of the most the most versatile tool in Illustrator is the uh, is the uh, pen tool. So that's what I'm going to start with. And the pen works differently than you probably uh, used used uh, other tools before. Um, it takes a lot of skill, but basically, when you click, it makes a point, and when you click somewhere else, uh, it it joins that. And if you keep clicking, you don't hold down the mouse; you just click. It's going to keep adding points. Okay, and then when you're done, you can press escape. Actually, you just choose the, uh, sorry, choose the selection tool. And uh, the whole path, and that's what they call this, is a, a path, is actually considered to be one, one object when you use the pen tool. Okay, if you use the uh, uh, line segment tool, it doesn't work like the pen tool at all. You actually click and drag, and it produces one segment, so two points, okay? And so it's, it's actually not at all the same as the pen tool. In fact, it takes you a lot longer to, uh, to, to make similar forms. And when you're done, there are actually you know, multiple uh, objects. Okay? So the just basic use of the pen tool is to, again, just lay down points that construct paths. And you can see that as I'm working, these, these kind of green things pop up. That's the um, smart guides. It's this checkbox right here. And what that does is it attempts to find like orthogonal relationships. It looks, it snaps to the, um, to the endpoints of things. It snaps to the, the, the path itself. It'll snap to the edge of the page. Um, so it works like snaps in AutoCAD, although it's not as refined. If you, you can pretty much just toggle it off and on. You can do Control U and that's about it. But it's, it's very useful though. So I've got my paths. And uh, besides making paths, you know, the other powerful feature of, of, of Illustrator that we use is um, how we can control lines. So if you go into this little uh, spill out here, when you click on it, you get the stroke panel. And stroke is equivalent, you know, it's the line weight. So right now it's optically, it's one point, just to show you. So three points is gonna be darker. I'm gonna make this a half point. It's gonna be a finer line. So you have a lot of control over that. And you can, you can type in things too. Um, you can control, um, so you have the weight, the color, you can open up the swatches, and there's some handy colors that are pre-made, otherwise you can go to color, and you can adjust, it's just, just like uh, Photoshop, you can manually adjust the color. Uh, you could go into, um, there's some preset sort of color, um, color sets, I don't use that very much. I uh, usually use swatches because, you know, we're, we're sticking with kind of raw primary colors. So like, you know, red, sorry, red, do that. Um, in Illustrator, so the stroke is this line here. So that's what this is. So th this has a black stroke. This has a red stroke. Okay. If you take another line, if another tool like the rectangle tool and you draw rectangle. So it has a stroke, right? What's behind here is the fill. And right now the fill, it has no fill. That's what this uh, none, this kind of check is. If I want to change that, I click on that swatch. And now if I go into a swatch here, 
and I choose a color that's the fill color. So this has a yellow fill and a red stroke. Okay, so I I, I can and then you can flip them. I can if I if I click this button here, it swaps them. So I have a red stroke and a I mean um, yellow stroke and a red fill. You can have a, a fill and no stroke. I can click on stroke and I can click on none. Um, so there's lots of variation. And again, I can change the uh, weight. And you can do some very kind of funky things if you have a very thick uh, stroke. Oops. Oh, another thing too is you have to be you have to be on the object to change it. Like what I just did right there. So I have no object selected, but I changed what the fill and the stroke was. Then if I drew something, it would uh, make that. Okay. But uh, to change this one, I need to be on that fill. And, you know, then I can make it something else. Okay. So, um, you know, so that's fill and uh, stroke. Um, if you have a path... Let me go and delete these here. To clear something, you just press the backspace, uh, the, you know, the, uh, you, you can pretty much just press like the delete key. You can also go into uh, edit, clear. I know that, you know, like the delete key works. I, I believe backspace does too. Um, if you have an object that's a line, let me increase the uh, weight here and you attempt to fill it so i'm going to i'm going to make a uh, you know pink fill you get effects like this so what it's attempting to do is it's not a closed shape so it's kind of attempting to figure out like what a fill would be so it kind of traces all this and then it goes back to this last point here okay so if you get that effect that's what's happening is you've attempted to fill a shape that's not closed okay if i draw with the pen tool a shape. Notice that, and it might be hard to see on the screen, but so my my pen's tool still active. The last point I used is dark, is, is filled in, and the rest of them are white. If I move into that last point, it there's a little like dot, like a like an O, like a little open circle. That means that if I click that, it's going to close that shape. Okay. And so now you know, that shape is closed. And if I went in and I, you know, filled it with pink, it's going to be filled the way we think we that should be filled. Okay. So again, with this red one, you know, I can go in. And here's an interesting thing. So I have a path that I made before. If I select it, actually, no, I don't even need to select it. If I go to pen tool and I click on the end point, you see a little hash, that little side slash. Again, might be very hard to see on the monitor, but try it on your computer. You get a little slash. That means you're going to continue to draw that line. So there's a, a path that was already drawn. And the pen tool says, do you want to keep drawing it? And I say yes. So then the next time I click, it's going to be adding to that. See, it's the same color. And if I go back to this point, see the O appears. And that means it's going to close it. And now I've closed that shape. And I can do things uh, like fill it. You change the stroke back to uh, the black. Here. Okay, so that's that's a pretty important thing to um, to see as well. I'm gonna delete these here. The pen tool, like I said, it's really versatile. So we just saw how we can draw something, and then we and then we can keep adding to something by adding in things uh, or actually close shapes. We can also add points to a shape. So if we click, um, actually take that back. Um, no, okay. So the pen tool can do that. If you hold down the mouse button and you, um, on the pen tool, you can get these other tools or you can add in points. So I can put a point in. You can remove points. If I go to the delete tool, I can delete points. Okay. So it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty versatile. Um, let me talk about why that's important here. So the selection tool, we've used this one, uh, we've seen this, uh, this black one. When I have the selection tool chosen, I can move an object around. So if I have that, if I pick an object, I can click the mouse, I can hold it, and I can pull it. I can move it around. Okay. And if I, if I select an object, just like in Photoshop, I get these like control handles. Um, I can scale an object in the X and in the Y, 
And if I hold down the uh, uh, shift, I can scale it uh, uniformly. Okay. Notice how the line weight actually scales. See, it's thin. It's actually thicker. We'll do something about that in a bit. And then the other thing is, if I have that selected and I go to the corner, I can rotate. And if I hold the shift, I can restrict the rotation to 45 degree increments, which is nice. Okay, so that's uh, selection. Uh, you can move things too if you hold down shift. You can move things uh, left and right, and it'll 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 stay horizontal, or up and down, and it will restrict vertically. So it's just like Rhino, just like Photoshop, just like AutoCAD. Shift uh, accomplishes kind of a uh, an orthographic uh, mode. Okay. So that's a uh, selection. The other one is this uh, direct selection. You see, it's different. This one's kind of a black arrow. This is the white arrow. The direct selection allows you to manipulate um, the points. So if I go in and I click on a path, when I mouse over a point, it, it highlights. I can move that point around. Okay. So you can actually edit things at the point level. So if I was really inclined, I could turn this into an enclosed solid. You can also sweep. I can I can drag and I can now I've got two points that I can move around. So it's very useful. And then I can go through with my pen tool. And, so this is where the pen tool is helpful because it's like I could I could add I could add a point so that I can move it to add detail to something. Okay. Um, let's take a step back. We don't get much use out of this in our architecture, but it's still important to know. If you are drawing with the pen tool, so I can draw two lines, and then if you hold the mouse down as you make that point, you'll get uh, a, 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 a curve handle. So you can experiment with this, but uh, this is um, a Bezier curve. And it's how you can, so you can actually introduce curves as you're uh, drawing something. You know, and uh, they're very precise. You know, curves. Okay. Now to uh, control that is a little tricky. It takes practice, but so one thing you can do to help you control it um, is hold down Shift. Yeah, do that. And if you do that, you actually restrict the Bezier handles to a 90 degree angle, and that can actually help you create like arcs, should you need them. And then you can very carefully construct, you know, uh, curves you want. And then, you know, when you're in that Bezier mode, uh, you, you continue to draw, like once you start to draw in Bezier's, you, you're, you're going to keep drawing those curves. To get back to orthogonal or like orthographic uh, lines or straight lines, you click on the point, you were you were using, and it turns into a little V, like a little uh, little V, and then the next time you draw, you're going to be back to straight lines, and you're going to be doing that until you uh, click and hold the mouse again, and now you're back to Bezier. Okay, and then again if I click, back to straight lines. Okay, now. Once you've done, you know, once you've constructed a uh, curve, you can go to the direct selection tool and you can play with these handles. Like you can click on the handle and you can, you can kind of pull it around. You can use the shift button to restrict it and it'll, it'll actually snap. Okay. So, um, you can always go back. And there's an interesting thing about you know again when you when you create um, when you create one of these, this one has two handles. So like I can I can pull this handle, or I can pull that handle because it's a Bezier curve and a Bezier curve. This one has a straight side, like a pinned side, and it has a Bezier side. So it only has a handle on one side, and you can get these kind of knots where it, it actually. So here is going to be it's always going to be a smooth transition because you have two curves, right? Here you get like a knot, so it's a straight to a curve. Same thing here, it's a knot. Okay. 
you can actually change all those different like types of uh, curves. If you go into the uh, tool and you do that convert anchor point tool, okay? And now if you go in and you click on a point, you see the little V, the little anchor, that's just like what the Bezier thing was. If I click on a point, it's gonna cycle through the different uh, types of points. So right now it's it's a it's a it's got a straight line and a Bezier line. And if I click, uh, if, if I, if I click on that point and I pull it, it's actually gonna create two. So now it's two Bezier. If I click it again, so now it's straight and a Bezier. And if I click this one, that, that line's straight and that one's a Bezier. And if I click this one, now I've gotten rid of all the curves. And again, if I go back to this though, with my, with my convert anchor and I click and pull, it's back to Bezier. Okay, so you can, you know, with practice, you can get very, very precise uh, control over this uh, in a way that I, I actually find difficult to do inside AutoCAD, okay? Um, so you may not use this, but if you run into trouble, you know, while you're working and suddenly you get these handles, uh, that's how you, you can change them back. So that's, that's actually why it's useful for you to know, okay? So that, you know, that covers really basic, like basic selection, basic transforms, uh, the, uh, the line uh, types, I'll show you something again. So I'm making a line, I'm holding shift. Just like in Photoshop, like I showed you guys, you can, um, if you hold down alt, you can make a copy of something. And if I hold down shift, I, I get a linear, uh, I get a, uh, basically like an orthogonal snap. So I can actually, if I, if I alt click, I get a whole bunch of these lines, okay? Then I can go in and, you know, if you look at the line types, um, I can, uh, you can, there's actually a, a, you can dash a line and it actually starts off by default with like a 12 point dash and then no gap. Watch what happens if I have, let's say 24 point, to type this in actually, 24. So now the, now the dash is 24 points long and it has a 24 point gap. Let's do a 24 point dash with a 12 point gap. Okay, so less gap, same dash. If I really find, let's have a two point dash. Ooh, too much, too small, four point. So if you get it small enough, you know, it begins to look like uh, dots, you know, and let's do, let's do a four point with an eight point gap. Or with a twenty point. Okay, so experiment with that. You can also go through with the dashed lines and you know really play with that pattern. So four point dash, twenty point, you know, and then a ten. So it starts to uh, look like Morse code or something. You know, um, you can. You could completely experiment uh, with that. No, oh, I need to select the line first. So you can get very complicated uh, line types, okay? And uh, so here's an interesting, an interesting thing. I'm gonna go ahead and to uh, to zoom, uh, you, you can use a zoom tool. I forgot to mention this, I didn't really need it. You can zoom, you can click, you can drag with the zoom tool. To zoom out, hold Alt and click. To pan, use spacebar. Scroll wheel uh, just um, accomplishes, it, it, it just actually scrolls the page. I find pan more useful. Let me go ahead and Alt, copy these. Now, the interesting thing is that I can, um, so you can, you can copy the, the attributes of something really easily. So I can select all these and then I can click on the eyedropper and it'll pick up the type and the color and the weight like instantly. Okay. So that's really, uh, that's really useful. So I can go in and the eyedropper, those things. Okay. 
And that, again, that applies to lots of settings. Um, the other thing that's really useful to uh, do, to add things to a selection, uh, hold shift, to remove them, um, press, um, hang on a second. Uh, actually, to remove them, just click them again with shift. Okay, hold shift to add. If you click it again with shift, it removes it. Okay, so I've got these lines. So a couple of interesting things uh, that can really save you time in uh, Illustrator. Um, if you choose something, uh, you can you can actually select other uh, objects that have the same attributes. So I choose that, I go to select same, I can say select same stroke color. So now I've got all the black objects. Oops, let's do that again. Select same stroke color. Okay, all the black objects, I just deleted them. I could go in and I could say select same stroke weight, which is actually everything. So lots of different things you can do when you play with that. Um, same fill color, you know, works. Um, that kind of thing. So um, you can you can use that to kind of quickly uh, establish like selections um, and things. Another thing that's really useful is uh, are the selections. So let me get this. Take care of that. Okay. So if I draw. So there, if you have, you know, in, in, in Illustrator, we're kind of, in, I mean, in, um, in, in, in Rhinoceros and in AutoCAD, we're using these kind of trim operations. You can trim out a line. Uh, you can do this in uh, Illustrator. It's not quite as easy, but it's possible. So one, one kind of tool that I like, uh, if you hold down the mouse here, I like the, uh, the scissors tool. And scissor will let you just cut a path anywhere. So I can, if I click and I click on the path, it actually separates out. So now I can delete like that piece. Okay. And that's kind of a, you can use that as kind of a trim. So like whatever, whatever object is on top, uh, gets, uh, gets trimmed and what it, which is, which is the order in which it was drawn. So, you know, if I click on my square, which I drew after the line, I can delete. So I, I just, I just cut, I, I cut a point here and I cut a point there and then I could delete that piece. So the scissors tool is, is a useful tool, uh, that you can experiment with. The, um, other things you can do, you can get into are the Pathfinder tools. You can go to Window, Pathfinder, and there's different things you can do with with Pathfinder um, that I find useful. When you're making, you're using the uh, Shape tool. I should mention this, so you can do shapes. And uh, if you hold down the mouse, you get different shapes. So I can get like an ellipse. And if I hold down Shift as I'm making an ellipse or a square or whatever, it restricts that to. Uh, uniform direction. So I can make a, a circle if I hold down shift when I make an ellipse. So I got two shapes and I select them both. And then when I do Pathfinder, so I can I can I can add them together. So now they're considered one path. Hence, you know, Pathfinder. Um, I can subtract what's on uh, the uh, the back from the front. I can find the union. I can find the intersection of them. So it's like the the path, the space that's occupied by both of them. And um, this tool kind of uh, combines them. Uh, and then if I go in, it creates a group that contains them. And I haven't talked about layers yet, but if you open up that layer, you can see that they're actually a group. And if I ungroup them, so they're in a group. If I ungroup them. You can see that it actually, so this is separate and this is separate and the in, the space between them doesn't exist. So it's kind of like, it removes the intersection. So it's like, whereas the one gave us the intersection, this one gives you everything but the intersection. Okay, so just kind of experiment with those, like be familiar with, with how those work. 
Um, the other tools uh, can be used uh, to do to do things that are uh, that have to do with the path itself. So if I do this first one here, divide, and again, I, this creates a group. So if I ungroup them, this actually gives me all the pieces of it. Okay, so it creates it, it gives me all the intersections and it splits them up. And that's actually the one that I like to use for trimming things. Let's redo this here. So if I have this operation, I want to trim it out. I can select all the lines involved, divide it, and uh, then I can just remove, well, that back. Ungroup this, and then I can just delete the bottom. Let's try some other some of these other ones here. So this isn't the second tool. My tooltips aren't working right now, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm actually just gonna. Ex so you you can experiment with those with the with the pathfinder. But um, again, there are lots of operations uh, for finding the different um, uh, path areas for things. You know, once you once you do one of these operations too, right? You know, these are fillable objects, so I have no failure. So I, you can you can certainly go in. And they're gonna give you um, regions that you can color in. A little, uh, on that note, a little uh, tip for some things that's really useful is uh, the live paint tool. And I'm just gonna drop a couple of these here. Oops, so what happens when you have fill turned on, okay. So, um, you could go, so let's say you had this kind of condition and uh, you were interested in, in this region here. And uh, you, you could go in and you could select this and you could pathfinder it and you could ungroup it and trim it and all that stuff like that. Another option, and it's something that uh, has a lot of uses actually, is uh, use live paint. So you select all the lines that you want in that, in that uh, operation and you go into the live paint uh, tool, which is, uh, we gotta open one of these up here. Yeah, if you open this up, the shape builder, go to live paint bucket. Okay, set your colors. I'm just gonna do. I like that blue actually. So I have blue with a black fill, and you can see that um, it says click to make a live paint group. And then when I click, it's gonna fill in. It's gonna flood any area. So it finds you know it turns red because it recognizes that that region is um, uh, enclosed. Okay, so that creates a fill just for the sake of fun. Let me go ahead and leave these none. Do the same thing here. So I go live paint and then I can click on it and then it's gonna let me, uh, well, I need to select a color, I guess. Okay, so you can do things like that. It's, it's it's nice. It's logical. It's like the paint bucket tool in uh, Photoshop. Okay. So you know, but what happens is is that you do that, and they're all like one big group. So what you can do is, you can go in and you can say expand up at the top. Okay. And so now, okay. So again, they're still grouped. If I go in and I say ungroup, so I expand and then I ungroup, and now, what's interesting is is that all of the um, Painted objects are one thing, and all of the paths are one thing. Okay, and those are groups. So you can ungroup those, and now you can pull those out. Same with the uh, colored ones. Okay, so it just creates a hierarchy. You know, once you create that live paint, everything gets kind of smushed together in, 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 in these multiple layers. Let's take a look at these actually. Uh, in the layer structure, just so you get a sense of what's going on there. So let's open up the layer. So um, this is a live paint group, and inside of it um, are you know it has these things in it, which these are the th pieces that were used to create it, the paths. If I go to expand, 
Now it's a group and it's a group of groups. Okay, so now you've got all these objects in there uh, that you can access. And again, so you expand it and then you ungroup it and then you have to ungroup each of these separately and you get these, get these things and then you can manipulate them. Okay, so in this case of the earlier one, so I can do that and all I want is the region, right? So I can actually go in and expand it, ungroup it. I can choose the lines that is easy to create it and I can delete those. And now I've got this piece and I can ungroup it. Now it's a path. And then I can go in and stroke it and give it a weight. And so now I've got that piece that I wanted. So that's actually, sometimes it's easier than trimming. Um, I find it easier. So, um, Live paint is a really useful uh, feature. Uh, the other thing, the last kind of thing that I want to talk about that I didn't really talk about much uh, earlier is what you can do with layers. So everything in uh, in, in in Illustrator, you know, comes in uh, on on layers, and that works pretty conventionally the way that uh, like the way Photoshop works. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make few objects here. Let's give give these whoa. Give these some color. And let's make this one red. Oh. If one of these pops out, just um pull it back into the side here and it'll pop in. You can actually move these around if you want to. There you go. Okay, so um, I have my, my layers panel. And so within a layer, the order, so you see green is the top one, it's on top, red is like underneath it, you know, these are all under green. If I click and drag the green, I can send it to the back. So the draw order, you can actually see the draw order uh, in the layer. Okay, so I could, I could send yellow uh, back if I want to. You can do it that way. You can do it with uh, the mouse by right-clicking uh, an object. So you select it, right-click, and then you can say uh, arrange. You can say bring to front. You can say, you know, bring ahead, you know, one level, uh, bring forward, bring backwards, send it back. Okay. So that's useful. The draw order is really important. It's really important to us when we're drawing lines as well. It's extremely beefy, okay. Oops. Uh, so the draw order matters. So imagine you were drawing some lines and the gray lines are intended to be kind of hidden lines. If they are in front of your uh, black, they're gonna make it look like the black line has actually been cut. So you want to really make sure that you send all those gray lines back beyond, back behind the black lines, okay? This actually raises an important point too. You see how these are actually, uh, the ends of them are square. Um, if you want to change that, um, and you might because uh, sometimes they don't look good when they're printed, you can change the cap. So you select it and then you change cap. So there's rounded caps, and then there's different kinds of like mitered caps. I like rounded caps uh, for that. And then another thing that's important is when you've got an object. So look at look at this. The the ends are are rounded, but the uh, within the uh, line the uh, points are are maybe sharp. And so you can change that too by changing the corners to rounded or mitered and play with those settings. Again, I kind of like rounded. Um, makes it a little squishier, uh, which can kind of. Uh, uh, make things smoother in the drawing. This actually raises another interesting point too uh, about. So when you have a filled object, the align stroke to, uh, thing comes on and right currently it's it's aligned uh, to the center. You can also make it aligned to the inside. So it actually goes inside the line or aligned to the outside. And those, they, those all have their uses. Um, but uh, that's something that's worth noting. Uh, if you ever need that? You can do arrows. Just finish off the tool here. You can do arrows by going into stroke, and then you can change the uh, just different arrowheads. 
I kind of like Arrowhead 4 and 5, excuse me. So you can do that. That's the starting arrow, and then you could you can you can scale that if you you know don't like that. You can also do the ending arrow, and there's different types. And that's useful for you know making drawings and diagrams and things. So you know all those. And um, you know, again, you can always eyedropper. I'm actually surprised it didn't copy that. Well, anyway, so um, those are just the, the the kind of to fill out the rest of the um, the rest of the stroke tool. The um, the layers to get back to layers. Delete these here. You could have actually bring these back. <laughs> You can, to make layers, so I, uh, to make a layer, you make a new layer. It's a button here, just like just like um, those, uh, in a Photoshop. To put an object on a layer, you could uh, drag the path onto the layer. So I'm gonna drag my lines onto layer two. And so now I can turn them off and on, and my geometry off and on. So that makes sense. You can, you know, open and close your layers. Um, another thing that you can do is uh, I'm, I'm going to shift click and then drag these here to layer one. Um, another thing you can do is to select all the objects and then go to the layer and then go to object, arrange, send to current layer and that accomplishes the same thing. So that's that's pretty useful. Um, you, can, um, you can name a layer by double clicking it and then you can call it, so I call this one lines Double click, call some shapes. Okay, layers have colors. So like when I select something, so these are, these actually turn red because my layer color is red. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just, just visual. These are blue. You don't like that, double click it. Can make them green. Okay. This is important because sometimes I think certain colors like uh, yellow, you know, don't show up extremely well, low contrast. Also, um, I don't even know why they have this, but well, I guess I guess I do. Um, you can sometimes accidentally get a, a white layer, especially when you import lines from rhinoceros. I'll show you what that looks like. Now, the problem with this is that you don't see the handles for the objects. Like here, you know, I see the red, I see the handles. There are transform handles, but they're just not easy to see. So this is actually something that uh, is useful to know. Okay, to erase a layer, you can uh, click on it and then you can trash it. And it'll ask you if you wanna, you know, do you want to erase it because it contains artwork, that's fine. Um, so that covers uh, those uh, those options uh, that I want to talk about. Um, just a final, uh, like a couple of final things here. If you had, if you've got a couple of lines, let's say, I'm going to uh, reduce the size of this here. You can also, this is a good point, if you're on a, a layer, you can actually lock objects or you can lock the whole layer and that way you don't accidentally select them. So I'm gonna lock this path. And then I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a path here. And this is more useful again for importing things, but I think it bears, uh, it, it's, it's, it's important to talk about. So here I have a shape and here I have a shape. If I could, un, yeah. There you go, unlock it, but they're not they're not one object, okay. Uh, and if I but if I wanted to make them an object, um, I could I could go into the I could select both the, the points that are actually in the same um, same location, and then go to object path join, and then if, if they are in fact uh, in the same place, it, they'll they'll be welded together. So instead of two points, I have uh, one point. And actually here I have a problem too, they're not actually joined together. So I can snap these, select it, 
You can actually tell because that, that ends open there. If I go in and I select them and I go to object, path, join, now that object is completely enclosed. Okay, so that's something that can be useful. Um, you know, you actually could do a live paint or something if you needed to. Uh, you know, that might be another like hacky way to fill it. Um, rulers is another thing I've been asked about. So, uh, I mean, uh, guides. To, so, um, a, a guide is like in, in Photoshop. It's a line that you can have that helps you um, arrange things, uh, helps you align things. You can go in to to do that, to add them, you can go into rulers and say show rulers, and then you get your ruler, which is actually handy for, for placing things and judging the size of things. If you click and hold down on one of these ends, you can drag out uh, like a vertical guide, click and drag on the top, you can drag in uh, horizontal guides, and you can snap them to things. Okay. And like the whole, and the guides actually. The guides show up on a layer, so if you want, you can actually create a guides layer. And again, I'm going to shift click to get all these and then put them on a, put them on a layer. Hide this. Call this layer guides. So I've got my, and the whole point of, of the guides is that um, you can snap to them. So, you know, with my smart guides turned on, I can snap. And it's an easy way to start by like aligning, you know, I can start to align things with this really easily. Okay, so guides are really useful. Oh, I started drawing on the guides layer. Uh, uh, um, easy enough. Let's pull these into here. There we go. Um, So one last, uh, oh, I think it's the last one. So I'm gonna make a bunch of uh, shapes. And um, an interesting thing, so once you when you choose multiple, I did it again, I'll turn off the guides here. You can also, you know what, you can get rid of guides too. Any guides you have, you can go into view, guides, oops, view guides, clear guides, and that'll actually delete uh, all the guides. You can also hide them. Uh, but you can delete all of them by just seeing clear guides and that'll get rid of all of them. When you select more than one object, you get this palette comes up and there's different options for aligning things. So I can align all of them, you know, to the left or I could align them all to the center of each other or to the top or middle or bottom. You can also distribute them. And uh, it, this, it's going to attempt to, you know, it doesn't change the um, uh, heights of them, but it attempts to distribute them evenly. Which is kind of interesting. So again, there's, if you drew a grid or an imaginary grid, they'd be evenly distributed. So you can play with that. Like that's actually kind of helpful. I think, I think it's particularly, you know, uh, when you, when you know you want things to align, uh, it'll do that very quickly for you. So, um, like I said, that's kind of, that's kind of useful. Um, one other point that that raises. So when you have uh, when you have an object selected, you know you can control a lot of things at the top. You can control the stroke. You can you can control uh, the, the line type. You can control uh, the uh, so up here when you have something chosen, um, you can control the x and the y location of it. You can type it in. You can control the width and the height of it if you want to. So I can make this actually ten inches uh, high. If you, if you check this, then you have complete control over uh, both of them. Otherwise, they're uh, uh, proportional. So I can make this 10, 15 by 10. Okay, so that's actually, uh, that's actually fairly useful. Um, another thing um, that I didn't, I didn't really get into is transparency. It's not something we use a lot, but I'll talk about it. So if I have two objects, actually move this one. You can say a range, bring it to the front. I can go in and I can change the opacity to 50%. So now with this one's, you know, I can see the other one through it. 
And the actual the stroke it actually becomes transparent as well. So that's actually something to watch out for. Okay. And you can go in if you open up the opacity thing. Um, you can do some do some different settings. So I have opacity set to fifty percent. There's different types of opacity, and this is based on some of the uh, modes in um, in uh, Photoshop. If you if if you're familiar, so there's like the darken type. And so it's like when one shape is allowed to darken uh, another, so you can see that it actually is different than the way it gets multiplied with a normal transparency. There's multiply, which is like you know again kind of like kind of like darken, uh, but it actually creates you know much darker edge there. Just different ones. Lighten, hard light, soft light. It doesn't seem to do much at all there, but so there's you know there's, there's actually a little bit of difference in uh, in those different modes. Um, that's worth checking out, and uh, you can kind of experiment with those. Experiment with different uh, draw orders. Okay, I find it less useful than uh, when you're inside of um, like Photoshop. I don't think I don't use it much in Illustrator, so delete those. If your swatches ever don't come in or you want a different set of them, uh, you can click on the uh, swatch menu up in the corner here. And then you go to open library. And there's all kinds of different like uh, predetermined uh, batches of swatches. Um, the default swatches are the ones, though, that so CMYK is the one that came up before. RGB, right, red, green, blue is going to come up. Uh, different things like that. So if you ever lose them, you can always pop them back open by saying uh, open swatch default swatches CMYK. They're exactly the same. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. But uh, if anything else comes up, uh, I'll probably add to this video. But those are just uh, the basic things that I think, you know, it would be helpful for you to know for working in um, Adobe Illustrator uh, in our program. There's certainly lots of other tools I don't talk about, like brushes and symbols and things. This is really about you know, working with AutoCAD files, working with um, lines exported from rhinoceros, like those kinds of things. Uh, I think this will give you um, a pretty good start on. Um, if you need a recommendation for um, a textbook or anything like that, let me know. But uh, this should cover the basics. Um, and I hope that's valuable. I'll, uh, I'll see you in class.